What is a bridge loan? Hey, what's up everybody? It is Jeff Trevarthan, Jeff the Mortgage Pro. Thanks so much for watching the channel. Really appreciate it. Let's jump right in today. We're talking about bridge loans. <laughs> what is a bridge loan? Uh, oftentimes I hear this thrown around and it's not really a bridge loan that people are talking about, but for the most part, let me define what a bridge loan is. It's short-term financing, usually anywhere from six to 12 months that can serve as a source to bridge the gap uh, between one property and the next until permanent financing can be established. So we in this particular market that we've seen over the last year uh, have heard a lot about bridge loans. And I'm sure you, if you're looking to buy a house and you already own your existing house, have probably even like considered the option of a bridge loan just because um, the market's supply right now is really hard for buyers to, to buy new homes. So it's really easy to sell your home right now in a lot of markets, but it's really hard to buy your next home because there's such little supply out there. So oftentimes we need to do this bridge financing to help us bridge the gap from one property to another. So most commonly you'll see it right now when you are buying your next property while also selling your existing property. That's where I see it the most. So here's some other common reasons why you might need a residential bridge loan. Number one, inability to for down payment without selling your current property. Now, sometimes there are solutions with this. We can get a HELOC on your existing property and then use that as the down payment on the next property, but you gotta qualify for all those loans and it makes it really hard to do that. So bridge financing might be the option here. Um, let's say you have a really pressing need to buy your next home. Uh, you got a job change, you got to move really fast and you got to buy your next home before you <laughs> like have any time before you can like even get started on your next job. So you got to move really quickly. That might be something where you need a bridge loan. So a pressing need to buy a new home really fast. The closing date for your new purchase is scheduled after the closing date for the sale of your existing home. So all the funds that you're going to need for the purchase of your next property are not even going to be available yet. So you might need a bridge loan type of a financing to be able to close down that new home before you get your funds from the existing home that you have. Um, and number four, a preference to secure new property before you're listing your current property for sale. So oftentimes, again, because the market is really hard to find that your next home property or people will use a bridge loan to buy their next property and then they'll sell their next sell their departing residence after they've secured their new property and they've already moved in their new property. So they don't have to move multiple times in that instance. And then lastly, sellers in your area aren't comfortable with contingent offers. This is the most common way, uh, most common thing that I've seen over the last several years, especially here in Silicon Valley is that people don't want to take a contingent offer. A contingent offer just means that um, you have to sell your existing house before you can buy the new house. And oftentimes you'll get that written into a contract. And uh, I would say that most people in the Silicon Valley, at least, and many other uh, affluent markets around the country are just gonna say, no, we're not gonna you know, sell on contingent offer because there's other people out there that are not contingent on selling their existing home. Now, if the market softens up a little bit, it may be that that is a better case. And you don't need the bridge financing to be able to do that. That if, if that's the case and that comes back and you're able to sell, uh, conti be contingent on the sale of your existing house before you buy your next house, okay? Um, so let's talk about some of the terms of a bridge loan. These are really, again, they're short-term loans, six to 12 months. So the departing residence is usually used as the collateral for that loan. And what that means is you're going to need some equity in the property. The higher price the next property is compared to the departing residence, the more equity you're going to need to secure this bridge financing. So, um, you know, funny enough, where I see most of the bridge loans happening, uh, at least in the, in the Bay Area, is not in the less than a million category. It's not in the, usually in the one to 2 million category. It's in like the two to $4 million category where people are, you know, selling a one and a half million dollar house and they're trying to buy a two and a half million dollar house. That's where I see bridge financing the most common. So oftentimes you have to be able like in order to move up uh, in a price point um, in different areas, you're going to need like plenty of equity in that property to be able to do that. So most stuff that I, you know, people will tell you is like, oh, you need 20% or more. Like, I think you need like 40 or 50 or 60% or more equity in your property to be able to do the bridge financing, especially the higher you go on your next property. So kind of crazy right there. So I would say rates is the next big thing. 
with bridge loans, they're usually three to 5% more than like a conventional or a jumbo loan. So if we're looking at 7% on, you know, conventional jumbo loans, we're looking at like at least 10% on these bridge financing. So one of the things, you know, that you have to, it's the price that you pay, I guess, for borrowing short-term money. So because they're an alternative product, because they're solving you a problem, like a lot of times they're going to be really expensive, um, which is crazy. So the short-term financing again comes up, it's usually six to 12 months uh, with a balloon payment at the end. So at some point you have to sell your departing residence to be able to pay off that bridge loan that you used to get your next property. Um, so that's one of the things that uh, you need to make sure that you have the end goal in mind before you actually get going with a bridge loan, because uh, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get stuck and I hope that nobody ever gets stuck, but it could happen that you have this huge balloon payment at the end if you're not able to sell your departing residence. So you got to be careful with the bridge financing. Oftentimes, uh, there's no payments required for at least a couple months, which is a benefit for you. So you can sell that property quickly and move into the next property, pay off the bridge loan, and then, you know, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. So that's a cool thing with this. Uh, in some instances, uh, a lot of the bridge money financing lenders will allow you to use interest only payments as well. So you can help minimize your cash flow, your, you maximize your cash flow. Um, and keep that mortgage payment as low as you possibly can while you sell your existing residence and get into the new property uh, going forward. And these are definitely going to be expensive. They're usually two to four points. And why are they expensive? Again, it's because of the convenience that they're providing for you to be able to get from one place to another without having to, you know, sell your property and then move into a rental and then buy your next property. And especially because we don't know how long it's going to take you to buy the property. And again, like right now or over the last several years, it's been really easy to sell your property, but it's been hard to buy a property because the supply has been so low. And uh, that's what they're solving with the bridge loan is to help you be able to make it easier for you. So those things are going to be a little bit more expensive when you're using a bridge loan going forward. Okay. Um, so this is all about, this video was all about residential bridge loan financing, by the way, there exists uh, a product in the commercial space called bridge financing as well. And you'll see that used a lot more in the commercial space than you are going to see it in the residential space. But at the same time, it's becoming fairly common in the residential space because it is such a good, you know, quick way to get from one place to another. So if you need help with bridge financing or you find somebody that's going to help you out with this type of a product, I'd love to be the person that helps you out with this. Uh, if you're buying one property and selling your next property, and this is something that you might need and you want the convenience of doing this, please reach out to me. I'll leave my calendar down below and uh, please go ahead and schedule an appointment with me. I'd love to chat with you and talk to you more about bridge financing um, or any other financing that you may need. Okay. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching my video and I will see you on the next show. Have a good one. Bye.